hello friends and welcome to the Worsted Witch Podcast. My name is Monica or Mika Nitz, as I'm known here on YouTube and Instagram. And this is my little crafty corner of YouTube where I get to share with you all of the things that I am making. I mainly do knitting and some crochet. I haven't ventured out into other crafts yet, but maybe one day. Uh, let's see, I also like to end my podcasting videos with TV and book recommendations, just stuff that I have been reading or watching. So if you are in the mood to talk about that kind of thing or hear that kind of thing, feel free to stick around to the end of this video and that's where that'll be. So today's video might be a bit of a long one. Um, I have been watching some other seasoned, if you will, podcasters and I have noticed a couple of things that they do a little bit differently from myself. Uh, one of the things that they do is get really descriptive and go really in depth with the projects that they have uh, worked on or the ones that they are working on. And I really like that. I find that that can be really, really helpful uh, to some of you out there. So I think I'm going to try to endeavor to be a little bit more descriptive and go a little bit more in depth with uh, maybe the construction of the projects that I'm working on than ones that I'm going to share with you today. So hopefully you like that. Um, please put it in the comment section below if you do or if you don't, uh, and I'll try to accommodate. But because of that, it might be a little bit of a chatty video, might be a little bit of a longer video, but I really hope you enjoy it and I hope you stick around. Um, I will put timestamps in the description box down below so that uh, if you don't want to hear me rant or if you just want to hear me talk about a single project, then you can just jump to that project and it'll be right there for you. So feel free to sit down with your knitting um, and maybe a drink. Tell me what you're working on if you are knitting because I always like to hear what everybody might be working on while they're watching this, if they're working on anything. Uh, sometimes when I'm working on things and watching podcast knit tubers, <laughs> I, uh, I like to share what I'm working on because it could just be fun. Maybe you'll find somebody else who has who's working on the same thing. That could be cool too. So anyway, tell me what you're working on. I'd love to hear it. And let's just go ahead and get started because like I said, it's going to be a bit of a chatty one and a bit of a long one. So let's get started with finished objects. I do have coffee here, so I might be periodically sipping on that. So just know. There we go. Okay, so I have two finished objects to show you today. Um, the first one that I have for you, I'm very excited to share you this finished object. Let me see here. Okay, so these are my Ravenclaw socks. These are the socks that I just finished these. I think, when did I finish these? probably a couple of weeks ago at this point. So Ravenclaw socks. This pattern that I used for these socks is the, I wrote everything down so I don't ramble. Um, the pattern that I used is the DK Weight Vanilla Socks pattern by Kay Litton, or she's also known by the Crazy Sock Lady. Um, I think she's on YouTube and on uh, Ravelry and Instagram as the Crazy Sock Lady. So you can check it out. This. Uh, yarn that I used for this pattern is the yarn that I purchased on my local yarn shop tour. I think my last video was my the complete video of my local yarn shop tour. Uh, the yarn shop that I got this yarn at is the All Wound Up Yarn Shop, which happened to be one of my favorite stops on that tour and I got a lot of footage in that shop so feel free to go back and check out that video but the yarn that I used is the Barocco Ultra Wool DK yarn so this pattern is obviously a DK weight sock pattern it is a cuff down pattern so it starts up here at the cuff you do a two by two ribbing here for about well it says about an inch and a half 
or as long as you want it to be. You can make it shorter if you want. And then it's just a very simple, very classic sock pattern. I haven't run into ones uh, that are too complicated, but it's cuffed down, it's worked in the round, obviously, and you go down to this, this heel here and then pick up stitches in the gusset and work down towards the toe. Um, obviously this pattern being just a vanilla DK weight sock pattern, it can be adapted to whatever you want it to be really. And I know, I knew specifically that I wanted these to be my house socks, <laughs> my Hogwarts house socks. So my Ravenclaw socks. So I just did a very simple, uh, two color striping here. Um, I did have two different skeins of yarn, so this isn't like a self striping yarn or anything like that, but um, I think they turned out really, really well. They fit me really, really good. I did make a size up though because I wanted them to be kind of, kind of just like house socks, kind of like squishy, comfy little socks that I can put on in the <laughs> in the winter or in the uh, autumn season and just kind of like watch Harry Potter I don't know I just wanted them to be squishy and comfy and so they definitely are that so they fit me really really well for that but I really love these the very easy pattern they I've never knit a pair of socks that are DK weight before but uh, these are DK weight and I was really really surprised with how fast <laughs> socks will knit up with DK weight socks. So if you are new to socks, maybe, um, I would try maybe doing a DK weight sock because it can be, like I said, it can be really, really quick and you can get a really good feel for what fingering weight socks might look like or feel like knitting up. Obviously these will be much quicker, but yeah, they're, it's kind of interesting. I, I like DK weight socks. They, it makes it for a very very squishy, <laughs> very squishy sock, very comfy. So I do like it. I can't wait to wear these. It is a little bit too hot outside to wear these right now, but especially with them being wool. But uh, once it cools down here, I can, I can go ahead and put these on. So this is my first finished object for you today, my Ravenclaw socks. I did put these up on my Instagram account so you can see a picture of them there and I also updated my Ravelry which I'm known as Monica1985 on Ravelry which I will link down below in the description box too so you can have that but I did update my Ravelry page uh, my project page and I did put these on there so these are on there everything is good <laughs> uh, if you have any other questions on you know, what I did to create this Ravenclaw sock pattern, feel free to let me know and shout it out and I will gladly let you know and maybe you can create your own Ravenclaw socks or if you're Slytherin or <laughs> Gryffindor or Hufflepuff, you can create those too. So yeah, this is the first finished object, Ravenclaw socks. All right, so let's see, the second finished object. You might be able to see him. Can you see him? All of you eagle eyes out there, can you spot my second finished object of the day? <laughs> Hopefully you can. My second finished object is, here he is. <laughs> this is Benedict, you guys. Benedict the chimpanzee. I finished him a few days ago. Here he is. He's absolutely adorable. I absolutely love him. He's got some kind of goofy ear going on here. It keeps doing this, but, <laughs> but he's really, really cute. Uh, this pattern here, this is Benedict the Chimpanzee, like I said. This is a kit that I also purchased during the yarn shop tour. Uh, you could see I also feature this guy. I show you the kit that I purchased at a yarn shop in Seattle. Um, I purchased the Toft UK, one of the Toft UK kits. They have a menagerie of different animals that you can create. And I was actually inspired to create a Toft animal from Martin. Uh, he's known as Knit365 here on YouTube. I think he also has a blog called Knit365 Blog. Um, <laughs> but he's absolutely wonderful. If you haven't checked Martin's 
channel out. I highly recommend checking him out. But he has an entire video on these Toft uh, Menagerie dolls, these Toft little Amigurumi dolls. And uh, I just love his creations. I just love all of the creations that he's made. I think right now he's working on the, uh, I think it's Women in Power or Powerful Women or Women in History uh, <laughs> topped UK collection, which is a collection of different little amigurumi creations of different women in history, uh, important women in history. And I think that that's really, really cool too. So I think that's what he's working on now. But because he has so many animals himself, and I always watch his videos, I was inspired by him to <laughs> make myself an animal. And if you know me, you will know that I absolutely love primates. I love apes specifically. I love chimpanzees and bonobo apes. Uh, they are just, I don't know, something about them. I just, uh, I love them so much and I don't know what it is. I, I, I feel like super close with them even though i've never met <laughs> any live chimpanzees um, if i did i'd probably start crying <laughs> i'd probably like lose my head and start crying but i absolutely love them and so i knew that the first animal that i wanted to make was a chimpanzee and toft actually had the benedict chimpanzee doll so I was so excited to find him on my local yarn shop tour. I'm so happy that I did, and I'm so happy that I purchased him because he's absolutely adorable. I simply love him. The great thing about these Toft animals is that they sit up on their own, and you can't really see it as I'm sitting here, but he sits up on his own here like this, and he doesn't need to lean on anything. And I think that that's really, really cool. So the Toft uh, animals, the pattern that I got was really, really easy. I'm happy that I purchased the Toft one because what you do to create these animals, or, or at least him, what I did was I, you create him in pieces. You create them in pieces. So you crochet all these little pieces to, first. So you do maybe his head, his body, his arms, and his legs and his little muzzle here. <laughs> you do all those and his ears. You do all these pieces separately and then you stuff them and sew them all together. And the reason I'm so happy that I chose Toft for my first Amigurumi is because they have a plethora of videos on YouTube. So if you get lost or confused and you don't know exactly what you're doing or how to create these animals or what you're supposed to do it's really really helpful to have those videos online and they they are really clear and they show you everything that you need to do so for me i had to watch a couple of videos uh to get him right so i had to watch the one on stuffing your toft animal because when i went in to stuff him initially i had I really stuffed him like I, <laughs> I tried to use like almost all the stuffing that I received in my kit and I really stuffed him like full and I noticed that he was just kind of really stiff and he wasn't as kind of floopy and cute as he is now and when I watched the stuffing video I realized that I had overstuffed him so I had to take some stuffing out so that was really really helpful to know so little things like that and then I had to watch the video on sewing him up and putting him all together because I didn't I like I said I had never created an amigurumi doll before and I didn't know how to sew up sew them up so that was really really helpful the cool thing about the kit that I got is it did come with topped DK yarn the colors that I used for Benedict uh, this dark brown color is called cocoa and the light brown color is called camel and so it came with those. They are actually here. I have, I have some leftovers from the, the yarn that I had in the kit. A lot of leftovers actually. So this is the yarn that I have in the kit. It's Toft wool, so it is wool. And the great thing about the wool yarn, the great thing about the wool yarn is that when you go and sew everything up, everything, the wool sticks 
together. Uh, something about wool, when it's sewn up or knit up or crocheted up, it tends to stick together. So you don't have a lot of like flyaways or anything like that. And that can be really, really good. So you can create these animals with other yarn if you wish, but I like the tuft wool. I think it turned out really, really nice. And it is kind of soft too. So that's cool. So this is my second finished object, Benedict. And I'm going to sit him back where he was. He was up here. He is kind of wonky too, because I, like I said, it was the first time I've like sewn up an animal before. So if you can't tell, I'm just gonna tell you, his head is a little bit turned to the left. Um, but that's kind of cool. That gives him a little bit of character. So. Yeah, so that's Benedict. He's my second finished object. Um, I'm very excited to have him. I told my one of my nieces, niece one, we'll call her, I told her, I sent her a picture of Benedict and told her I was so excited and what's her favorite animal. I'll see if they have one, a kit that I can create her, her favorite animal. And her favorite is bunnies. <laughs> she loves little cute bunnies. So I'm gonna make her, I'm gonna find a bunny from Toff to see if they have one and I'm gonna make the bunny for my niece. So that'll be fun too. So that'll be my second. <laughs> that'll be my second. And when I find that kit and purchase it, I'll let you know. And yeah, that'll be fun. So <laughs> I've gone down the rabbit hole of <laughs> soft animals, the menagerie. Uh, and we'll see what else I create. But that's my second finished object. He's absolutely adorable. Benedict. All right, so let's go ahead and move on into works in progress. And I do have quite a few works in progress for you today. I have, I think, six works in progress. Okay, sorry about that. I had to stop the video and just check that my mic was working because I've been having some issues with this, this uh, what do you call this? This sort of lapel mic that I purchased. And for whatever reason, it's sometimes not picking up my voice so i had to pull it off <laughs> so i apologize um i'll start this video again i'm not going to start it again but i'll start where i was so works in progress that's where i was um so i have kind of a lot <laughs> to show you today i have six works in progress and the first one i'm very excited to show you but let me show you here let me take it out i have it in this big <laughs> this big, big bag that I purchased during the local yarn shop tour. It's like huge. So somebody dropped something. I have my window open, so I'm sorry if you hear some background noise, but <laughs> something was really loud just now. Anyway, I have in here my slip stravaganza blanket. Um, if you have been watching my videos for a while, you will know that this slip stravaganza blanket is one of the reasons I actually decided to make this YouTube channel um, is to track my progress with this slip stravaganza blanket. This is a pattern by Stephen West or West Knits as he's known and here it is. Here. This is my slip stravaganza blanket. If you go on my Instagram or actually better yet on my Ravelry page, if you have access to Ravelry, you'll get to see some better pictures of this blanket because it's too big to fit in frame of my, of my phone. So it's not going to, I'm not going to be able to show you the whole thing as it is, but this is where I'm at so far with my slip stravaganza blanket. So the yarn that I'm using for this one is the Valley Yarns Haydenville DK yarn. It is a yarn that I purchased from yarn.com or webs as they're known on the internet. And it's sort of a cheaper yarn. I think it definitely is like an acrylic yarn, but since this is a blanket, that doesn't really bother me too much. Uh, acrylic yarn doesn't really bother me too much, but it is a cheaper yarn because I couldn't afford the Westwell yarn because he does have kits, Stephen West, on his website for his yarn shop. I think it's called Stephen and Penelope. So StephenandPenelope.com, they're based in Amsterdam, but they ship all over the world and you can purchase kits on his website for the different 
patterns that he has and he does have kits for this slip extravaganza blanket so if you go on there you will be able to see the kits that he has available for this but they were a little out of my price range so I couldn't afford that so I went on yarn.com here in the United States and I purchased the Valley Yarns DK weight but I really really like it actually I'm quite happy with this yarn so far there's no pilling so far with this yarn uh, none whatsoever like not even on the back here so there's no pilling with this yarn which is actually quite nice and it is acrylic but it's, it's very very soft it's not a hard or crunchy yarn at all it's just a very very soft yarn and it is DK weight it is I think I think it's perfect for the blanket just because it is soft and it definitely has sort of a drapey feel about it so I quite like the yarn that I've purchased for this I think it works well the yarn colors that I'm using uh, the main color is that black so just a straight black and then the contrast colors that I have I have three different ones uh, I have the light gray which is called silver the uh, medium gray which is just called gray and this dark darkest gray which is just called dark gray so those are the contrast colors that I have. I only have the three. I did have the monochromatic look. Um, I did do that on purpose just because I felt like the, the grays and the black would just kind of go with my decor in my space a little bit more. So I did do that on purpose, but I actually think it works. I think it works really, really well. I do like it. So this is my slip extravaganza blanket. Um, this pattern, what you do is you actually start here in the center. Uh, you start here where that center is and you start with uh, a cast on called Emily Oker's circular cast on method. Um, and the pattern when you purchase it, it does have a video link that you can click on. So if you don't know how to do Emily Oker's circular cast on, uh, she can walk you through, you can be walked through on how to do that. It's very, very simple. So you start at the center there and then you increase the stitches outwards and you work towards the, you work towards the border or the outside here. So you start here, these beautiful, this is start, this dot here in the center is this garter stitch. So you start here with garter stitch. It moves into these beautiful honeycombs. So you move into these gorgeous honeycombs that move right on into the bubble section here. So you have a little bit of a break after the honeycombs and then you move into the bubble section. Um, if you've been watching my videos for a little while, you will know that the bubble section, I have been on the bubble section for probably, probably about a year at this point or almost a year close to a year it's been quite a while since I have been on this bubble section let me just put my hair back because put my hair back because it's kind of getting hot <laughs> um anyway so if you'll if you've been watching you'll know I've been working on this bubble section for a very very long time uh it feels like forever um, in the bubble section, there were 786, I believe, stitches on the needles, which is so many. Today is the most stitches I've ever had on the needles. It's absolutely crazy. And one row, um, and you do knit in the round here, so one row would take me like just about an hour. So if you can see, I have 12 bubble stripes, and each row took me about an hour so 40 minutes to an hour which so that's a lot of knitting that's a lot of knitting time this that's a lot of hours I'm not even going to try to do the math <laughs> but it's a it's a lot of hours so 12 bubble stripes an hour row you could do that math that's a lot um, so it has been quite a while since I've been working on this bubble section I finally finished the bubble section you guys I finally finished about I don't know, about four or five days ago now, I put it on Instagram when I finished and I was so excited. <laughs> I was so excited to have finished the bubble section. I like 
poured myself a glass of champagne, of bubbly. <laughs> I poured myself a glass of bubbly because I finished the bubble section. <laughs> because I was just celebrating. So I really, really was so excited. You have no idea <laughs> finishing that bubble section. Um, but once you finish that bubble section, you can uh, cast off and it has a, a Pico edge cast off for a smaller version of this blanket. Um, the smaller version, instead of 12 bubble stripes though, has nine bubble stripes. So you finish nine bubble stripes and then you can cast off if you don't want the large version. Uh, this large version is going to be big enough for a f at least a full-size bed. So it'll be big enough to fit a full-size bed uh, in the round. So it's going to be very, very large at the end. So if you don't want to make the larger version, you can make the smaller version, which is just a nice kind of throw size. Um, so you'd stop it just about here. And yeah, that'll be a nice throw. So you can do that if you want the smaller version. I obviously am doing the larger version. So that's why I have 12 stripes. After, um, now that I'm done with this bubble section though, I'll move on to the, these beautiful slip stitches, which are just going to be called checks. So, uh, the slip strap against a blanket, if you have seen the, uh, tw I think it was 2020, correct me if that's wrong, but I believe it was 2020 that Stephen West had the mystery, uh, the annual mystery shawl lit knit along that he has every year. In 2020, he had a shawl that is now called Slip Stravaganza. So this blanket is obviously modeled after that shawl. So um, if you knit that shawl, you will know what the checks are, but they're just basically beautiful slip stitches. So you do a checked checks, you do a section of checks, and then the end of the blanket is that beautiful chevron edging so beautiful triangles and chevrons that creates the edge of the blanket i will insert a picture so you can see what the final product is going to look like um, obviously that's going to be in a different color but that's what the end product of this blanket will be it'll be the checks and then the edging which will just be the chevrons so yeah so that's where i am right now i am just starting i'm just starting the checks as you can see, so I don't have too many of them yet. I don't have, I've only done a few rows. So I haven't done too much yet. You can't really see what it's gonna look like, but yeah, this is my slip strap against a blanket. This is where I'm at. I'm absolutely in love with it. I can't wait to finish this blanket. I think this is gonna be the year <laughs> that I finish it. I know I did say that at the beginning of the year, but, and, for a while there because I hadn't finished the bubble section for a while I wasn't sure if that was going to be doable I didn't know if I was actually going to be able to finish this blanket this year or not but I think now that I'm done with the bubble section I think I can do it I think I can finish the blanket <laughs> it'll be It'll be tough, but like I said last time, I have been prioritizing this blanket over some of my other projects, so that's why the bubble section is done, because I've been prioritizing it like I said I would, so we'll see what happens. I'm going to try to finish it this year, but it's already June, and I don't know, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how long the checks take me, because there's more stitches on the needles now. I think there's like over 800, so... We'll see. <laughs> we'll see where I get, but that is my first works in progress, my slip strap against a blanket. All right, um, my second works in progress is my Beauceron sweater. So this is a pattern by Vincent Deslandes or Designs by Dells, as he's known by. And the yarn that I'm, here's my Beauceron. It's all, <laughs> I have, have everything put away, so apologies. But this is my Beauceron sweater. Um, the yarn that I'm using for the Beauceron sweater is the Barocco Vintage DK yarn. The I'm using two colors. The pink color is called Ballet Slippers, and the light brown color is called Oats. So this is my Beauceron. You can see where I'm at. 
um <laughs> this sweater the construction of this sweater is kind of easy but very interesting so it is a top-down sweater so you start here at the top and you knit down towards the body um so what you do is you actually cast on using a long tail cast on and you knit in a one by one ribbing uh, until this cut this collar is done it's about an inch inch and a half and then you do some neck shaping with short rows so I think that that's kind of a cool design feature so after you do the one by one ribbing for about an inch inch and a half you have this gorgeous back neck row shaping that's done here with short rows and it just kind of gives you a nice seamless front to back and you're able to distinguish which side is the front and which side is the back, which I think is kind of a nice design feature. Um, and then from there, you're going to work through the yoke and the yoke features this gorgeous two color slip stitch uh, stitch. So it's this beautiful two color slip stitch design. And you know, when you purchase the pattern, the pattern is very descriptive and it will tell you when to increase depending on the size that you knit. The size that I knit is a size five. So if you have the pattern, you'll know that I'm a size five and it tells you where to increase stitches and how many to increase throughout the, throughout the yoke. So you can see how that goes. Um, once you break for the sleeves, which the pattern tells you how to do, you'll knit in the yoke pattern that slip that two color slip stitch just for about a few in few inches down from the breaking of the sleeves and then you'll finish the rest of the body in your main color which for me is the oats color and that is just in plain stockinette for the rest of the body and then you bind off the body with this one by one ribbing for about an inch or two this one by one ribbing and then you bind that off um, when you do bind off the ribbing though, because it is that one by one ribbing, you want to make sure that the bind off that you do here is going to be a looser bind off so that it's not going to be difficult <laughs> to get over your head since it is a pullover jumper. So you want to make sure that it is sort of stretchy. So there are many different stretchy um, cast offs that you can do. I'm not sure the name of the cast off that I used. Uh, if I find it, I'll put it in the description below so you can see, but it's just a very loose ribbing bind off. Um, it's where you do like yarn overs and cast off that way. So like I said, if I can find the name of the cast off that I did, I'll put it in the description for whatever reason that's slipping my mind. But you just want to make sure that the cast off that you do is going to be a looser cast off so that you can get that stretch in the body. Um, one of the cool things about the rest of the body, though, when you get to it after the yoke, when you get to it, when you're just knitting stockinette, you do do a slip stitch at the in every other row so that you get this beautiful, let me show you, you get this beautiful, I don't know if you can see it, but you get this beautiful line that goes down each side of the body. So you get that here, and I think that's kind of a nice design feature. It almost looks like a seam. So I think that that's really, really cool. It's going this way. I don't know if you can see it <laughs> very well, but but yeah, that's the slip stitch. So I think that that's kind of a cool design feature. And you actually get the same thing on the sleeves. So I'm on the first sleeve right now here, obviously, as you can see. And on either side of the sleeve, you have this beautiful slip stitch here that also looks like a seam. So it's the same one that you do on the body. You also do it on the sleeve. So that's kind of cool. I like that a lot. Um, when you do pick up stitches for the sleeve, you pick up stitches here. You do about three or four inches of the two color slip stitch design that you did in the yoke. And then you knit the rest of the sleeve in plain stockinette and plain stockinette while decreasing for the sleeve um, to the stitch count that you need. So the pattern does detail all of this. The pattern is very well written. It is a very well written pattern. I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't done so already. Um, it's just a fabulous pattern. Um, now, if you can tell on my Beauceron sweater, this is the front here. This is the sleeve. So this is my left sleeve. Um, maybe you can't tell, but maybe you can. 
the sleeve that I'm working on right now, I'm almost finished, but the sleeve that I'm working on, you might be able to see where I've decreased the stitches. <laughs> if you can't see it, um, hold it up like this. Maybe you can see better that way. So if you can see um, what you're supposed to do in this sleeve pattern is you're supposed to start the plain stockinette in this sleeve here. You start it here and then you're actually, depending on your size, like I said, it'll tell you when to start making decreases and how often. And for me, using a size, uh, doing a size five, I was supposed to start doing decreases every sixth row on the sleeve starting here. So I was supposed to knit six rows and then do a decrease row and then just continuously do that until it's the desired length that I want. But for whatever reason, I totally spaced it and I totally forgot to do the decreases. So if you can't see, my sleeve kind of does this, goes like straight up and then it kind of like does this dip right here where you where I'm doing the decreases. So it's kind of funny. It goes like that. It's kind of like curved <laughs> this way and it's quite noticeable. Um, so it's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be just a straight kind of curve. <laughs> it's supposed to be just a straight curve, but mine is very unnoticeable curve. Um, so that is a little bit of a mistake that I made. I did consider uh, tinking it back or ripping it back to, to you know, this part right here and starting the sleeve the sleeve body over again but when I tried it on <laughs> I noticed that where this little dip is on the sleeve this little dip right here where that little dip is where you can tell where I started doing the decreases that's actually right where my elbow is <laughs> so when I put it on and I'll try to put it on and put like a maybe a side video so you can see it looks good when I put it on because when I put it on it's like I have that straightness right to the elbow and then right where my forearm right where my elbow is to my forearm to my wrist here it's like that seam seamless kind of <laughs> it kind of decreases in stitches I don't know I don't know how to explain it right but it, it looks good when I put it on so I've decided not to mess with it. Uh, I did make note of how many rows I did before I started doing the decreases, obviously, so I can do the same thing on the other sleeve and they'll, they won't look weird. They won't look different. Um, but yeah, you're not supposed to do that, but that's what I did. So anyway, <laughs> that's definitely, it definitely makes it my boaster on versus anybody else's. So <laughs> yeah, so this is my boaster on sweater. I'm now that I've sort of prioritized my slip extravaganza blanket, I really want to try to prioritize getting this sweater and another sweater that I'm working on that I'm not going to show you today. But I want to try to get those sweaters off the needles and finished. Um, so, and like I said, I'm just on the sleeves for this one and I'm on the sleeves for the other one too. For whatever reason, the sleeves just take me longer than the body because I don't know, something about sleeves is like a little bit boring. So, but I'm gonna try to finish this. Uh, hopefully the next podcast, this will be a finished object. And yeah, so that's it. That is my Beauceron sweater. All right, and so the third works in progress that I have for you today is a new works in progress. I picked this up a few days ago and uh, I've started it already. So the third works in progress that I have today, and I'll show you a picture, it is the Lux Faux Fur Cowl. This is a pattern by Stephanie Jessica Lau. Um, she also goes by All About Ami, I think on Ravelry and maybe Instagram. Um, but her name is Jessica Lau, or Stephanie Jessica Lau, excuse me. And this is a beautiful faux fur cowl. Uh, I had the idea of creating a faux fur cowl, and I found this very simple, easy pattern created by um, All About Ami, and I decided to knit with her pattern. So this, so far... <laughs> is my cowl. 
This is the faux fur rectangle. So this cowl, the yarn that I'm using for this cowl, um, I'll talk about the yarn in a minute, but this cowl, what it is, is it's knit in two separate rectangles. So what you do is you knit your fur, your faux fur yarn, you knit in this, you just knit it in garter stitch. I think that's about all you can do <laughs> with faux fur yarn is you knit it in garter stitch and you just knit it straight uh, all the way down till it's about 36 inches in length. I have finished the faux fur side, so you can see this is about 36 inches and it's just straight garter stitch all the way down. Uh, this was really, really quick. So this faux fur side of this cowl is very, very quick. Um, it goes by really, really fast. And then you knit another rectangle. The other rectangle is knit in worsted weight yarn. The yarn that I'm using, like I said, I'll go over in just a minute, but um, you knit the other side with worsted weight yarn and this is also the same size as the faux fur but it's curling up so you can't really see it that well but you knit this side of the cowl this is your second rectangle and so you knit it up to where it's 36 inches so mine is a little less than half obviously at this point uh this stitch is the let me see so this stitch on the worsted weight uh, yarn is worked with a beautiful long slip textured stitch. Uh, that long slip textured stitch is outlined in the pattern um, and it's just this beautiful long slip textured stitch. Really, really pretty, really, really simple. Uh, the yarn that I'm using for this, uh, so <laughs> when I purchased this pattern. The pattern does say to use the Lion Brand Go For Faux yarn, which is the yarn that I did use for this faux fur, but I didn't realize that the Lion Brand Go For Faux fur yarn has two sizes. So they have the Go For Faux, which I think is just a regular, the regular size, and then they have the Go For Faux Thick and Quick. Um, and I, for whatever reason, I just didn't know that they had a thick and quick version of that faux fur yarn. And yeah, so the yarn that you're supposed to use is just their regular go for faux yarn, which will work with a size 13 needle, it's US size 13, which is pretty big, but it's not that big, but it should work for that size. Uh, <laughs> you know, the go the regular go for faux yarn should work for that size. But I accidentally purchased the go for faux thick and quick. So mine worked with a size 17 needle. So mine went up a lot faster. But there was also a lot less yardage in each skein. So I instead of the pattern actually calls for only two skeins of the regular go for faux yarn, but I actually had to purchase four of them because the thick and quick just doesn't have as much yardage as the other, as the other, as the other size does. So I had to purchase four of these, um, but it gave me the 36 inches that I needed for the cowl. So <laughs> just know that um, the go for faux thick and quick does have two sizes. There's thick and quick and just the regular go for faux, which I'm assuming is just a basic, like chunky, just a basic chunky size, but it. You can use a size 13 US needle, but this thick and quick, you really need big needles because I used a size 17, so that's crazy. Um, and then this regular cream colored yarn, uh, the yarn that I'm using is actually Cascade. Let me see. It's Cascade 220 yarn. The color is cream here. This Cascade 220, uh, you're supposed to use a worsted weight yarn. I did look it up and the Cascade 220 can be a worsted weight yarn. I think mainly it's just, it can work as a DK weight yarn. It's kind of a light worsted weight. So, but it definitely works for this cowl. It's, it's knitting up quite nicely. So yeah, so I'm working on this right now. Uh, this this side of the cowl, what you do is you knit these two rectangles together and then you actually sew them up together. Uh, you seam them together and 
Then you have this beautiful cowl that I will insert a picture of so you can see. It's this beautiful just faux fur cowl and it's reversible. So you can have it um, the fur outside or the fur inside either way um, and it will work for you. But I fell in love with that pattern that uh, Stephanie Jessica Lau created and so I went ahead and purchased the yarn that I needed for this just kind of on a whim. And this is knitting up quite quickly. This uh, long slip textured stitch is knitting up quite quickly, but it is kind of just a simple textured stitch. It's not too complicated at all. And I thought it fit really, really nicely against this busy faux fur. So I thought it fit really nicely against that. This is obviously going to be a cream colored <laughs> version of that cowl. I just thought it looked really clean and, uh, really clean and just kind of nice. It'll go with a lot of things, I think, in the end. So that is my faux fur, Lux faux fur cowl that I'm currently working on. Hopefully next time I make a podcast, this will be a finished object as well. This is very mindless knitting and this will just be very, very quick, I think. So when I just need something to work on, I can work on this because it's just very simple. So that is my faux fur cowl. Um, if you have any questions on the faux fur cowl, feel free, excuse me, feel free to let me know because it's very simple, but it can get, it, I imagine it might get a little bit complicated for some people. So if you do have a question about it, feel free to let me know. I'd be happy to help with that pattern. That'd be okay. Okay, so the fourth works in progress that I have to share with you today is my granny square cardigan. So if you've watched some of my other videos, you will know that I have decided to create my sister, one of my older sisters. I've decided to create her a granny square cardigan, and she has requested that it be a monochromatic granny square cardigan, and she likes the black and grays. So I am creating her, and I'll just show you some of my granny squares. I'm creating her a granny square cardigan. These are some of my granny squares that I've done. Some of there's a lot of them, <laughs> some of them here. Uh, the pattern that I'm using for this granny square cardigan, I didn't share with share it with you last time, but the pattern is a free pattern, actually. It's a free pattern by Caitlin on a website, her website called originallylovely.com. I'll put that information in the description box down below so you can have that. But it's a very simple granny square cardigan. And what you do is you actually just crochet four by four inch granny squares um, together. You create granny squares in the round. So you crochet these in the round, you increase at the corners to create a square. And all you do is make four by four squares. So depending on the size that you need, like I said, it is a free pattern. So you can check that out on originallylovely.com. But depending on the size you need, she tells you exactly how many four by four squares to make. And then once they're all done, you just seam them up together. Um, and she does have information on her website on how to seam them up together. Apparently, what I'll be doing to seam them together is using a flat slipped stitch join technique. Um, I'm not quite sure what that means or how to do it yet, obviously, but <laughs> once I figure that out, I'll show it, share it with you guys and show you. But yeah, so for my sister, she is quite small <laughs> in size. So for her, I'm knitting her the extra small, small version. And what I need is 54 granny squares, uh, 54 four by four granny squares. So I have, I think about 48, 48 or 49, something like that. I have just about that many. <laughs> so I'm almost done with the four by four granny squares for her. And once I'm done, I will get to uh, arrange them all and sew them all up together using that join stitch. Um, the pattern, as she has it on her website, you can check it out. As she has it on there, she does have this, the square count for how many squares you need for whatever size you want to make. And then she also has diagrams for how you're going to seam up the squares together. So once you're finished with the squares, she provides a diagram on how to seam up those squares. So you can see, um, see that 
on her website and it's really it it doesn't look very hard it looks quite easy and I think I think I'll be able to do it with relative ease um, but obviously once I get there I'll share it with you guys but but yeah this is where I'm at <laughs> on the granny square cardigan I'm not quite finished with it with it yet obviously but I'm going to try to finish this one soon I keep saying I'm gonna prioritize this or that but I think I really need to get this finished. Uh, I want to have this granny square cardigan finished by October for my sister just because she does live in Las Vegas so it's not too cold over there right now especially being the summer it's very very hot so she doesn't need the cardigan right now but I think once the autumn season comes around um, and for for Vegas having lived there my whole life, I know what their weather is like. So for Vegas, the autumn season uh, doesn't actually start usually, it doesn't really get cool until like October 31st. <laughs> like Halloween, for whatever reason, it's always Halloween. It always gets cool on Halloween night. So <laughs> she won't need it until October, I imagine, other than yeah, so I imagine she won't eat the cardigan until October, so I'm going to try to finish this before October so that I can send it over to her and she'll have it. So yeah, so that's where I'm at on my granny square cardigan. It's coming together. Uh, just finding time to do the squares really is the hardest part. So, <laughs> But I have been slowly working on it. So almost done with the granny square cardigan. Um, I did forget the yarn. The yarn that I'm using is just a cheap yarn. Um, I'll show you. I have so many of them. I have so many colors of this cheap yarn. This is the same yarn that I'm using for my sisters. I'm just using the grays and black and white for her. Um, this is the same yarn though. It's this 100% acrylic big twist value yarn. I got this yarn from Joann's here in America which is just a big box craft store and I purchased like basically all the colors that they have. They have just like so many colors of this acrylic yarn. They have just like a crazy amount of colors. So I spent like $30 like just purchasing all the colors. And uh, this is quite a big skein. Obviously there's 380 yards in each of these skeins. So I have a lot of this stuff. I have a lot of that yarn. And I plan on making my sister's cardigan obviously, but I also want to make myself a granny square cardigan. Um, so I'm going to model it after my sister's. It's going to be basically the same, but it's going to be, hers is going to be a short cardigan version and mine is going to be a longer one. So for me, I'll have to have more squares. <laughs> um, and I haven't really been making any granny squares on my own cardigan yet. I've just been working on my sister's. So, but I have all the yarn that I need, <laughs> all the yarn that I'm going to need for my cardigan. And once I get that together, I'll, I'll show you. So yeah, so I'm actually creating two granny square cardigans, but I've only been working on the one. So, um, but yeah, that's the yarn that I'm using. It's just that big twist yarn that it's hundred percent acrylic, which I think is okay. Um, I don't see a whole lot wrong with using acrylic, especially if it's all you can afford. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so that's the granny square cardigan that I'm making for my sister, one of my older sisters. Um, and the fifth works in progress, almost done with works in progress. Uh, the fifth works in progress is my Fifth Avenue shawl. And I will pick this up, to show it to you. This is my fifth works in progress, my Fifth Avenue shawl. This is a pattern by Sachiko Umura or I think she also goes by Nitty Mo. Nitty Mo on Ravelry, if you can find her there. She has beautiful work. I mean, her, her work on, she's just so beautiful. Like her work is so clean, and so seamless and gorgeous. Anyway, but this is her pattern. This is her Fifth Avenue shawl. Uh, the yarn that I'm using for this one is the Knit Picks Alpaca Cloud, which is a lace weight yarn and the Knit Picks Aloft, which is their fluffy mohair base yarn. And I'm holding those two together while I'm knitting this. So uh, this pattern is, the construction of this is a bottom up triangu triangular shawl, excuse me. It's a bottom up triangular shawl with asymmetric lines created by these 
very easy lace stitch. It's very easy lace stitch. So the asymmetric lines, as you can see, they're kind of like off center, but that gives it like a nice little character. Um, I did decide to, number one, I decided to knit this in black <laughs> um, because I, it's a little bit boring, but I decided to knit this in black because I felt like it would go with a lot of my wear, a lot of my clothes. I think I felt like I would get a lot of wear out of just the plain black, just to have something plain, I think would be nice. So I did decide to do that. And then I also decided to add beading to it. So I have the Miyuki round seed beads in the size eight, I believe. Um, <laughs> Miyuki round seed beads in size eight. This is the gunmetal gray color and I don't know if you can see it very well um, in the video but they're right in the middle of that lace work that's where hold on that's where my seed beads are if you can see once I block this you'll be able to see them I hope a little bit better but yeah this is where I'm at on my fifth avenue shawl so far this pattern is easily customizable in in length by the many the different pattern repeats that you do so the pattern repeat is the asymmetric line so you have it's basically just garter stitch but these lace lines here is the pattern repeat so right now i have about uh four pattern repeats going on so i have like one two three four this i'm just starting the fourth one so I have four so far. I can do more or I can do less, just depending on how large I want the shawl to be. I think I'm going to do a little bit more of this one, just so it can be a little bit larger. And then you'll bind it off and it'll just be a regular triangle shawl. So it is customizable, so you can do that. Um, you don't have to hold the mohair yarn together with the lace if you don't want to. If you're sensitive to mohair and you just, or you just don't like <laughs> mohair or just it feels scratchy next to your skin, I totally understand. My mom is the same way and so she doesn't like the mohair too much. But um, I don't mind the mohair so much. It does give it kind of like a nice little halo, but you don't have to hold it with this. You could just use lace weight yarn. Um, so you can do that. That's totally fine. But this is a very simple pattern. It's not very difficult at all. However, I do find that because these pattern, this pattern is sort of like a, a repeat pattern, I do find that I have to count how many rows I've done within each repeat. So it, it does, it's not very hard, but it does involve some counting. And I find that I can't really do it mindlessly. I really have to keep track of how many rows I've done and how many repeats and stuff like that. So I'm constantly writing down <laughs> the number of how many, what, what number row I'm on. So it is a very simple and easy pattern and it's very quick, but it does take a bit of counting. So I wouldn't say that this is a mindless knitting project. So just know that going in. But it is a very simple, elegant, I think, shawl. And I can't wait to be done because like I said, it does look very elegant. It looks very pretty. Um, once it's blocked, it'll be quite nice to be able to see those beads too. So this is my Fifth Avenue shawl. I haven't really been working on this too much just because I've been <laughs> doing other things. I've been working on my blanket and I've been working on the new cowl the faux fur cowl <laughs> that I have. Um, and the faux fur cowl is mindless knitting as, as this one is not. So, um, so I haven't been working on it too much and uh, we'll see where I get with it. But that is my Fifth Avenue Shaw. That is a pattern that was also on my Make Nine in January. So in January, I did the Make Nines where I chose nine different patterns that I wanted to make over the year. And at the end of this year, we'll see how far I got <laughs> with those nine projects. Um, but I have, I have started it, so it is part of my make nine. So we'll see how far I get with the make nine. But, uh, but yeah, so that's my fifth works in progress. And then my sixth and final works in progress is my Persian tiles crochet throw. So, let's pick it up. 
I did share this with you last time, but this is my Persian Tiles Crochet Throw. This is a pattern that is, um, this is what it looks like. This is a pattern by Janie Crow. This is a kit. I purchased it in a kit. I got from a company called Mary Maxim, which is just a, a crafty online store, I believe, that you can purchase different kits at. And they don't just have uh, crochet or knitting. They have like different needlework projects too that you can do. So I purchased the kit on marymaxim.com and it did come with the yarn. The yarn that it came with is the Premier Yarns DK Weight yarn. It's the anti-pilling yarn. So it's definitely acrylic. It's kind of a cheaper yarn, but I feel like because this is a lap blanket, it's not a big deal. Again, I don't really mind acrylic. So yeah, but it did come, like I said, in a kit. So it came with <laughs> all of the yarn that you need. So it's kind of a big bag, but this is the end product here. That is what the Persian Tiles crochet blanket will look like. Um, the construction of this blanket is kind of interesting. So you knit, or I'm sorry, knit, you, you crochet, <laughs> you crochet these beautiful tiles um, and they look like this. So you create these beautiful crochet tiles. There's quite a few of them that you do create. I think there's 16 tiles in total. So you create 16 tiles in total and then you do some granny squares and there's three different kinds of granny squares. There's um yeah there's granny squares. There's three different kinds of I'm sorry two different kinds of granny squares and two different kinds of granny square triangles. So that'll be kind of a new technique. I've never created a granny square triangle before but I imagine it's not that difficult. Um, but you create these large granny squares here, probably in two different colors. And then you create these large granny square t corners, these triangles as well, um, probably in two different colors. And then once you finish the granny squares and the tiles, and you can do that in whatever, whatever way you like, um, once you finish those, you assemble it as it's shown here. Um, and then you seam them all together or sew them all together. So I'll probably use the same technique that I'm going to use with the granny square cardigan, my sister's granny square cardigan, that flat slip stitch join technique. I'll probably use that same technique with this, with this blanket. So we'll see what happens. This won't be finished for a little while, but this essentially is in the end what it's going to look like. So I'll show you where I'm at with that. Um, I have finished these eight tiles. So I have eight tiles finished already. So that's about half. That's a good amount. So I have eight tiles finished here. And then I'm working on four other ones right now. I'm not very finished with those, but I'll show them to you anyway. <laughs> um, these are the other four that I have right now. So I have to weave in the ends. But <laughs> these are the other four. So as you might be able to see, these four and these eight are a little bit different in colors. So, you know, they provide you all the yarn, but the colors for each tile is a little bit different. So you can kind of distinguish <laughs> how you're going to end up putting them together. But yeah, so this is where I'm at. I have eight tiles completed and then I'm working on four in these colors and then I'll make another four in some other colors. So I have, I'm halfway done, halfway done with the tiles. <laughs> um, and then once I'm done with the tiles, I will work on the granny squares. And what I'm doing, if you wouldn't, if you can't tell um, from this, but what I'm doing is I'm crocheting these kind of in assembly style. So I'm taking one color and using it for for all the rows that I need for each tile. So I'm doing it assembly style and I find that that's a little bit easier for me. Um, and it, it is kind of going a little bit faster. It's it's crocheting, it's, it's coming up quicker than I thought it would. So doing it assembly line, I don't know if that's <laughs> what you're supposed to do or not, or if that's the easiest thing to do. For me, it's working well, so. Yeah, that's the six and final works in progress that I have. The 
the <laughs> Persian Tiles Crochet Throw. Um, like I said, this is going to be sort of a smaller uh, blanket. It is a blanket, but it's, it's going to be sort of a smaller lap, lap blanket size. It's going to be 46 and a half by 46 and a half inches. So it's just going to be a big <laughs> square essentially, and it's not going to be very, very large. So it's not going to be able to like fit a bed or anything like that, but it'll be a nice little lap blanket um, to have around. So that is my Persian Tiles Granny Square, not Granny Square, Crochet Throw. <laughs> Excuse me. Persian Tiles Crochet Throw. And that is my sixth and final works in progress for you today. Um, I don't have another works in progress to show you. Um, but I do have some future plans. So let me go ahead and share with you <laughs> my future plans. So um, if you watch some of the other uh, knitters here on YouTube, you might know about this knit along that <laughs> is taking place starting July 1st. So I'm going to be taking part in the Across the Pond shawl knit along and this is going to be hosted by Fernanda from Little Monkeys and Me and Ruth from Ruth Loves to Knit. I will link both of their videos and podcasts <laughs> on this uh, down below so you have that but this is a knit along going to be taking place from July 1st to September 30th. Um, you could check out a little bit more about the knit along on Instagram or on Ravelry or uh, Ruth from Ruth Loves to Knit does have an entire video <laughs> on information for this knit along. So if you want to, uh, I'll link it down below. So if you want to check that out, you can. But I'm going to be taking part in this year's uh, knit along. And what it is, is you have a shawl pattern, um, no scarves or cowls, but it has to be a shawl pattern. <laughs> so you're going to create any shawl pattern that you wish and you're going to knit or crochet that shawl um, during that time period. So from July 1st through September 30th, which is about three months, it's a good amount of time <laughs> to finish a shawl. I think it's more than enough time really to finish a shawl. And like I said, you can choose any shawl pattern that you like, any yarn that you'd like, um, and really just they want you to have a good time <laughs> with it and maybe connect with some other knitters. So I'm going to take part in this year's shawl knit along. Um, and I did decide on the pattern and yarn that I'm going to use for the knit along. So I will insert a picture of the pattern that I'm going to use. But the pattern that I've decided on is the Brioche Alicious shawl. It's a pattern by Andrea Mowry. And the construction of this shawl, like I said, I'll insert a picture so you can see. But the construction of this shawl, it looks like a very beautiful crescent-shaped shawl. It has three different brioche stripes in it. They're separated by garter stitch. So the brioche stripes are separated by garter stitch. And it is quite a long shawl, um, as you might be able to see some from the pictures. It does look like a very long shawl, but I think that's kind of nice because you can wrap it around <laughs> yourself, um, you know, and it's nice and cozy and I don't know. I, I kind of like the shawls that are a little bit bigger or a little bit longer. So yeah, so that's the brioche delicious. That's what I'm going to be creating. It's, uh, it does have brioche in it too. So it is going to be a little bit squishy, which I kind of like. So, um, I find that can be a little bit comforting <laughs> to wear the brioche. I really like it. So that's the pattern that I've decided to make. Now, in the original pattern created by Andrea Mowry, she does have three different contrasting colors for each brioche stripe. So her garter stitch that's breaking up the brioche is knit in this beautiful cream color, and that's her main color for the shawl. But the three different brioche stripes in the crescent-shaped shawl are knit in three different colors. So, um... So you can do that. You can knit three different colors of brioche for the shawl, but I decided to just do one color throughout the entire thing instead of doing three different colors. So let me go ahead and show you the yarn that I've decided to make this shawl with. 
Um, this is a little bit of an experiment too. Using this yarn is uh, kind of unexpected. So <laughs> I kind of wanted it to be a little bit monochromatic and I knew I only wanted one contrasting color for those brioche stitches. So I've decided on red <laughs> and I'll just show you the yarn that I'm using here. Um, the main color, I'm going to be using this beautiful burgundy. This is the Cascade Yarns Heritage yarn. It is 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. Um, there is about 437 yards in each skein. Cascade Yarns is a Seattle-based yarn company. Um, <clears throat> it is quite a soft yarn too. It's a fingering weight. So it's quite nice, um, but this is gonna be my main color here, this gorgeous burgundy. Uh, I don't think it has a color name, it just says 5663, <laughs> but it's basically burgundy. And then the contrast color that I'm gonna use for the brioche section is this gorgeous one. This is also the Cascade Yarn Heritage Yarn, and this is called Christmas Red. So the Christmas red will be the brioche stitch contrasting color. Um, and then the main color will be the burgundy color. So this is kind of an unexpected <laughs> color combination, but I really wanted to try it uh, for whatever reason. So it's kind of, uh, what is it? Kind of, kind of an experimental Thing. I'm not quite sure if it's going to work out like I think it's going to work out in my head. So <laughs> what I'm going to do before the knit along starts in July, what I'm going to do is knit a swatch and I'm going to knit a swatch in just plain brioche um, and then plain garter so I can see how these colors mix together and how they're going to look. Um, and if it doesn't work, if I don't like the way the the two red color is turning out, then I might switch this main color to gray. So um, just like a dark gray and then a dark gray and red will be nice. Um, but I want to try this, <laughs> this color combination out first and see how that works. So that is the yarn that I'm using. Um, I did just purchase this yarn. So it's still in these skeins like this. <laughs> I haven't caked it up yet, um, but I wanna cake it up soon and knit a swatch in brioche and see how this works. Um, but yeah, that is the yarn that I'm using. That is the pattern that I'm making, the Brioche Delicious by Andrea Mowry. And I'm very excited <laughs> to take part. I think this is just the second year that Fernanda and Ruth have done the um, Across the Pond knit along. So this is only their second year, but I find it, that's really, really fun. So I'm going to take part <laughs> and I'm very excited for it. So yeah, so that's what I've decided on doing. And then the other thing that I've decided on, and I don't, unfortunately, I don't have the yarn here to show you because it's still on its way. <laughs> it's not here yet, but I have decided to make a cardigan. Um, this book I purchased few weeks ago. This is the Outlander Knitting official official Outlander Knitting book. Um, it has 20 different knits, 20 different creations that are based off of the Outlander series. And if you know and you've been watching my videos, you will know that I am a massive Outlander fan. I absolutely love it. So I was very excited to get this book. So I did purchase this. Um, <clears throat> and I found... Actually, this <laughs> this is where I got the idea for the faux fur cowl that I'm making too, if you can see <laughs> this gorgeous picture of this beautiful mink cowl that she's wearing <laughs> in the show. That's how I got the, the idea to make a, a faux fur cowl. So <laughs> just kind of FYI. Um, but yeah, so I purchased this book and they have a lot of beautiful patterns in the book, obviously, but they do have this one here and I'll show it to you. They have this one uh, gorgeous cardigan that I've decided to make this gorgeous cardigan. Um, this is the, it's called the I Found Him Lace Cardigan. This is designed by uh, a woman named Holly Yo. It is a beautiful laced cardigan. 
very light, very summery, very airy. And it is modeled after a cardigan that she wears, that Claire, um, played by Katrina Balfe, that she wears on the show. So they have a picture of it here in the book. This is a picture, a still picture of the show, um, an episode in the show. And I think this is ep season three, episode four is what it says. And this is a cardigan that Claire, this is the main character here, or one of the main characters. This is a cardigan that she wears on the show. And I'm not, I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but it's a beautiful, it looks exactly the same. It looks exactly the same as the lace cardigan picture. Um, and that's the cardigan that I'm making. So I've decided to make that cardigan. So <clears throat> this is a better picture where you can see it really, really well. But I've decided to make this cardigan. Uh, this cardigan, the construction of it is, it's knit in pieces. So you knit the, the pattern in different pieces. So you knit the front panels, the back panel, the arms and everything separately, um, seam them together and then the collar is knit as well. It does feature uh, gross, gross grain um, in the buttonhole. So I've never put gross grain uh, ribbon in my buttonhole, uh, in anything really. I've never used gross grain ribbon before. Um, and the designer did say on her Ravelry page that it is a little bit time consuming to put that gross grain ribbon in the cardigan, but it creates a really beautiful effect and it's, well worth it <laughs> is what she said so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to put the grass grain ribbon in my cardigan once i have it knit up but uh i do plan on making it um uh, the yarn that i'm going to use and i searched forever for <laughs> for a good yarn to use because the yarn that she uses in the pattern is very very expensive uh <laughs> it is the cardiff cashmere 100 percent cashmere yarn that she uses in that pattern, I cannot afford that because the Cardiff Cashmere 100% Cashmere yarn is, I think about $30 a skein, if not more, I think it's just $30 a skein. And there's only like 97 yards in, <laughs> there's only like 97 yards in each skein and each skein is $30. And for this cardigan to fit me, I need at least 1500 yards of that yarn, of the yarn. So suffice to say, I cannot afford the Cardiff cashmere yarn for the cardigan. Um, so I was trying my hardest to find a comparable alternative and I really want it to be very drapey and very light. And I kind of wanted a little bit of cashmere in there. So I tried, I looked forever <laughs> for a yarn that I could use for this cardigan. And I do want it to be that beautiful burgundy color that it is in the show. So I finally found some yarn, you guys. I'm so excited. Unfortunately, I don't have it here to show you, but I will insert a picture of what it looks like so you can see. But I purchased it. It's on its way. <laughs> it's a yarn from a company called Onling. Um, on Ling is a Danish yarn company, a sustainable yarn company. They're in Denmark, I believe. Um, the On Ling yarn, I purchased the number 11, which is their sustainable merino cashmere blend yarn. And the color that I purchased is deep red. So it is gonna be that deep burgundy color. It's going to be really, it's like ox blood. It's very, very pretty. Um, <laughs> and it's a cashmere blend. So it does have that little bit of cashmere in it but it's also that merino yarn, uh, that merino wool. So it does, from the description online, it does say that it is a very drapey yarn and it makes a beautiful cardigan. So I'm very excited to get that yarn. It was only $11 a skein. And so it was considerably cheaper than, I think there's a little over 200 yards or just about 200 yards in each skein. So that is definitely cheaper than the Cardiff cashmere yarn. It's definitely way more affordable. So I was so excited and so happy to find that yarn from Onlink. And I am so excited to get it. So 
And it's really cool that it's sustainable merino too. I was reading their website and they have all this information on sustainable yarn practices. And I find that to be really, really cool and really, really interesting. And I'm gonna have to look a little bit more into what it all means. But, uh, but it's really nice to know that it is that sustainable merino cashmere blend. So I'm very excited to get it. Um, but when I get it, I will have another podcast to show it to you because I'm just so excited. <laughs> um, but I don't know when I'm going to get that yarn yet or when I'm going to start that pattern. But I do plan on making the I Found Him lace cardigan with that gorgeous merino blend, merino cashmere blend yarn. So that those are my two future plans. Um, kind of interesting that both of my future plans feature red yarn. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, those are both of my future plans. That's all of the future plans that I have though. I don't have anything else. Um, and as far as this video goes, I will just end the knitting talk here. So if you are not interested in hearing about any books or tv shows and stuff like that and you just wanted to hear the knitting talk if you're just here for that feel free to go ahead and click off of this video now but thank you for being here thank you for watching happy knitting i do hope you come back too so go ahead let's go ahead and move on into books and tv show recommendations so i haven't been reading too much which very bad. <laughs> I need to read more. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to read more. So I haven't been reading too much, but I did go to a bookstore here that we have in Tacoma, Washington called Half Price Books. And I purchased some books over there that I'm very excited about and I can't wait to read. So I'll show them to you. Um, <clears throat> I purchased... I purchased some love novels. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys out there read love novels, but I kind of like love novels. They're kind of romance novels, they call them. Uh, anyway, I like them. I got this one. This is by Jude Devereaux called Legend. I have heard some good things about Legend. I have read another Jude Devereaux book before. Um, I think it's called Remembrance. I have read that book before, uh, but I've never read Legend, but I have heard good things. So I'm quite excited to read this. Um, it is, I think, about a woman. There's time travel in it, which is always exciting. <laughs> but she tra time travels to... Um, 1873 Colorado. So it weaves a tale full of adventure, tenderness, and passion. So I'm very excited to read Legend. I did pick this one up. And then I picked up another romance novel called A Dance Through Time. And this is a novel by Lynn Kirland. I believe is her name. It's covered up here, but it's, it's Lynn Kirland. It's called A Dance Through Time. Um, and this is another time traveling romance novel, <laughs> um, which I think is kind of fun. Uh, this one is Scotland 1311. So the 14th century Scotland, which is kind of interesting. I don't know, is 14th century Scotland considered medieval time period? Uh, comment down below if you know. Some of you out there are a lot smarter than me with history, but <laughs> um, I'm not sure if it is or not, but 1311 Scotland and a woman from 1996 New York. So some time travel involved here. Definitely a romance novel, but I'm very excited to read that too. So A Dance Through Time by Lynn Kurland. So I have that one. And then I picked up this book, which I've never read before, but many of you out there may have. Uh, I picked up Rebecca by, uh, this is a book by, who's it by? Daphne du Maurier. Daphne du Maurier? Is that how you say her name? Daphne, that's how, Daphne du Maurier. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but um, Rebecca is a classic novel. I've, there's an old movie version of Rebecca that I've seen. I don't, can't remember who's in it, but I've seen it years ago like when I was probably a teenager, <laughs> like a young teenager, like 13 or 14 or something like that. I've probably, I, I remember watching Rebecca like years and years ago. I don't remember the storyline at all though. 
like at all. Like I, I remember watching it and being a little bit scared by it, but I don't remember what the story was about. Um, <laughs> so, but I did see on Netflix that they have a new version of Rebecca. I, I don't know if it's a movie or a TV series. I want to say it's a movie, but it's starring Lily James, who I'm quite a fan of Lily James. I think she's a wonderful actress. So I am very excited to see it. It's a new version. I think it was 2020 or 2019 that she did Rebecca um, on Netflix. It is still available on Netflix to watch. So um, I want to watch it. But before I watch it, I do want to read the book too, because I've never read the book before. So I did pick this up, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. <laughs> and I'm probably saying that name wrong. But yeah, so these are the three books that I picked up at Half Price Books. This book was in the romance section as well. I did find it in the romance section of Half Price Books. So it's probably a romance novel. But like I said, I remember the movie years ago being like it scared me for whatever reason. So it says it's a romance novel. But is it a scary romance novel? Like I said, I don't remember the storyline, like at all. So anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna get started on Rebecca first, probably, because I wanna read that first. But I did pick up all three of these novels there and they're all three romance novels. <laughs> so hopefully you guys um, are okay with the romance novels and there's a lot of hate <laughs> against romance novels, whatever, I like them. So <laughs> I'm going to read these three. I did pick those up. Um, and then as far as TV shows and movies, I haven't really been watching too many movies. Um, movies, I did go see the new Jurassic World movie. Jurassic World Dominion is what it's called. I was very excited to watch it because um, the old characters from the very first Jurassic Park film are back. Um, mainly the three main characters played by Laura Dern, Sam Neill, and Jeff Goldblum. They're back. <laughs> They're in this movie. Um, and so for that reason, I was very excited to see it. It, it was a little bit unspectacular. Um, I think I probably had high expectations of this movie and it didn't quite live up to that unfortunately, but I did enjoy it. It is a movie though that I think that you can wait to see. You don't have to watch it in theaters. I think you can wait to see it streaming uh, at home. So I would, you know, wait for that. It is a movie that I don't think you need to see in theaters, but it is very good. It's not bad or anything. It's just a little bit underwhelming for what it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be the final installment of the Jurassic World trilogy <laughs> series so um yeah it's just a little disappointing um that that was the final installment but but it was good and it was nice to see Sam Neill and Laura Dern and Jeff Goldblum together <laughs> in a Jurassic film so that was kind of nice and I they were definitely the best part of the film but uh but yeah so I did watch that and then TV I haven't really been watching too many new things. I did start a new TV show that I'll talk about. Um, I have been watching Stranger Things, as probably everybody has. <laughs> Stranger Things uh, Season 4 Volume 1 has been out for at least a week at this point, and I have watched the entire thing twice. <laughs> I've watched the entire thing twice. I love that show. Um, that show is so, so good. It's just really, really well done. I'm really happy with the fourth season um, because they've really gone back to the creators, the Duffer brothers, have really gone back to their roots in season one. There's um, the Dungeons and Dragons, the D&D &D stuff is back in a really big way. So I won't tell you what happens, obviously, but I will tell you that I really enjoy it. And I'm very, very happy that uh, that the Dungeons and Dragons stuff is back in the way that it is. So I, yeah, I'm very happy with it. I really like it. I can't wait for the volume two to come out. 
Uh, but I think volume two is only two episodes. So yeah. <laughs> now this fourth season, the episodes are a little bit longer than they have been in the past. I think they're a little over an hour for each episode, but yeah. So that's kind of disappointing that I don't think volume two has seven more episodes. I think it's just two more. So it's disappointing that there's only three more hours left, basically, of this <laughs> Stranger Things uh, thing. So that's disappointing because I don't want it to be over, but but it is very, very good. Um, I know some people don't like Stranger Things, though, or they just can't get into it, but I quite enjoy it. I think it's wonderful. So I did watch Stranger Things, and then I started watching a newer, well, it's not new, but it's new to me, a show on Apple TV Plus called Ted Lasso. <laughs> I started the Ted Lasso show. So there's only two seasons of Ted Lasso. I did watch both of them already, so I have finished it. Um, it's hilarious. <laughs> so Ted Lasso is starring Jason Stakis. And I think Juno Temple is in it and Brett Goldstein. He's a British actor as well. Um, basically, Ted Lasso is about this American football coach who comes over to the UK to teach British football. And if you know the difference, the British football in the United States would be called soccer. And in um, Britain, it's called football. So obviously there's different rules. It's a different game. <laughs> and uh, Ted Lasso, being an American football coach, knows absolutely nothing <laughs> about uh, uh, British football. He knows absolutely nothing about it. And so it makes for a very funny show. And uh, yeah, I just, I really enjoy it. It is very good show. Um, the second season, well, actually both seasons are very good. I think the first season is a little bit funnier than the second season. The second season is a little bit heavy in terms of character development. Uh, so, but I quite enjoy it. I quite enjoy the Ted Lasso show, especially that first season. So yeah, so I did finish that and that's the only new thing that I have been watching. Um, and that's really it. I don't have anything else to talk about or share with you today. Thank you so much if you've made it this far in uh, watching this entire video. I really appreciate you. And yeah, I hope you come back for the next time I make another podcast. Just a little update on my po little podcast here. I have been trying to grow my channel and get a few more viewers. And what I'm trying to do is get to 500 viewers or 500 subscribers, excuse me, at least. Um, so that I can do a little giveaway. So um, I'm still planning on doing that. When I get to 500 subscribers, I will be doing a little giveaway, probably some local yarn that I pick up here. I am in Washington State. So just some local yarn that I might have in my stash, I will do a giveaway <laughs> when I get to 500 subscribers. So I'll go ahead and do that for you guys. Um, right now I'm more than halfway there. So I'm at like 300 and something <laughs> subscribers. So that doesn't seem like a lot, but for me, it's a lot. So I'm very excited <laughs> that there's that many of you watching my videos. Um, it's a very cool, very exciting. Um, and I wanna do a bit of a thank you for watching my videos by doing a giveaway. Um, but I'll do that when I get to 500 subscribers. So tell your friends, <laughs> if you really just want the free yarn, uh, tell your friends and hopefully they can, we can grow the little community here, um, which will be nice. So yeah, that's really it for today. You guys, I hope you have a wonderful weekend, a wonderful Saturday or Sunday or whatever day it is <laughs> that you're watching this on. And that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Happy knitting!